got no way I'm going There ain't, ain't got no way Ain't got no way I'm gonna make it without my Lord No, ain't got no way I'm gonna make it without my Lord No, ain't got no way I'm gonna make it without my Lord No there ain't, ain't got no way, ain't got no way I'm gonna make it. Let me just say this. Dr. Kelly Bonhoff stands as an emphatic guide with a history of childhood adversity and sex trafficking, coupled with over 30 years or 35 years rather of expertise as a registered nurse, licensed marriage and family therapist, and co-founder of Josephine's Clinic in nonprofit serving those who have experienced human trafficking and violence. She unveils her own spiritual awakening in her new book entitled, What's Going On With My Family? A Roadmap to Healing Trauma, Unlocking Your Hidden Power, and Remembering What Is Sacred. There is so much more, folks, but for the moment, we're gonna allow our guest, Dr. Kelly Bonhoff, to come into the studio as we introduce her to share her expertise and her experience. Dr. Kelly? Thank you, Andy. I'm so joyful <laughs> to be with you. I am so excited to co-create a space of sacred energy. Yes, thank you very much. We appreciate that and we appreciate you. There is so much that I want to ask and so much that I want to speak with you about but I mostly want to look at the fact that you have done so much work with people with regards to anxiety in families. And I know that there are more than five things that we can look at. But what I want us to look at is how can we identify, Dr. Kelly, signs and symptoms of trauma that could negatively impact a family particularly in this modern times that we're dealing with. What are some of the signs that we can look out for? How can we recognize that something is wrong and that trauma has had some level of impact on our families and family life? Yes, so from the beginning of my own uh, journey here with my parents and three siblings, so we jumped into what I call the shark tank of energy, which is a heavy energy. So as the oldest, I had three important jobs. The first was to keep my mother healthy. The second was to keep my father happy. And the third was to keep my siblings safe. So one of the things we notice right away in our families is that there is a heaviness of energy around us. And if we're noticing how we're feeling, if we're really small, we're very confused about where are we? What is happening here, right? But as we are kind of programmed into the family's rituals and routines in order to survive, what happens with trauma, the way that I describe it is trauma is any lived experience that causes a shock or distress to our mind, our body, and our spirit to remain connected. So that sacred uh, nature, which is worthy of unconditional love, devotion, and reverence. So the very first thing as an individual we might notice when we're little is that we feel a sense of unworthiness, unlovability, or not enoughness. Now that doesn't come naturally from within us because naturally we are love in action. But what happens is when we're in that energy and if our parents haven't had their 
opportunity to remember and awaken and their parents before them and so on, this echo of heavy energy continues to gain momentum and kind of keeps us entrapped into this heaviness. So I talk about it as energy. And so the first thing a family or an individual would notice are thoughts related to I am unlovable, I am unworthy or not enough, not just as the individual, but the entire family feels that they are broken or toxic or dysfunctional. These are the labels that the systems around us continue to feed us. And that is a very disempowering narrative. And so through my own journey, what I finally was able to notice were these patterns the old echoes is what I call them of generational trauma and to some extent what is known as karma and how we would be able to slow the momentum of this heavy energy transforming fear into freedom. And so that's the very first thing that I notice about families who are entrapped into this heavy energy unknowingly so. Hearing you speaking about generational trauma being passed on, but I also hear you speak about the ability to recognize that something is different, something is unusual, and it is not the norm. The question that comes to mind is this. Yes. How so we, the way yes. that this happens is uh -huh. it's the five misconceptions. Let's yeah. let's talk about that a minute, which will lead to a change or a reframing of language. Right. So the very first misconception right. families are actually entrapped in the way that so our every thought we think, every word we speak, every belief we hold, every emotion we feel and every action we take is based on heavier or lighter energy depending on our environment. And so what I noticed is that there was five misconceptions in my own lived experience and then through the lived experience of very traumatized children, teens, couples, adults, and families. And they are the five that I share in chapter two of the book. The very first misconception we have is that trauma is normal well, it's actually not normal. It is an old echo or pattern that has been passed down since the beginning of the very first domino that fell. It is not a normal experience. It is an, our natural state of being is not trauma. So that's the first thing I would say. The second misconception is that someone holds in their heart or several someones hold in their heart this feeling of responsibility, as if the trauma that has occurred within their family or generations of family is their fault somehow. And when we take on a responsibility that we are to blame for our mother's health or our father's unhappiness or our siblings' lack of safety. So as the oldest, although this can happen in any member of the family or more than one member, I notice, is someone within the family or many someones are taking responsibility for the trauma, which is not theirs. The third misconception is power. So what happens in families in order to feel safe and secure, we create these power dynamics in communication interactions. So the more ritual, the more routine, the more we listen to, in my case, what father says goes, or this idea of wait till your father gets home, you know that? That when we, when we create these boundaries around us that keeps the trauma entrapped, we have, we feel like this power dynamic or differential is somehow keeping us safe, which leads to the fourth misconception that somehow we will remain safe within the misunderstanding of trauma, that it's normal. Since we're familiar with it, trauma begins to, the momentum of it stays within families because we're familiar with it. We understand it and to move outside of trauma 
is pretty scary because it's uncertain. We don't know, it's unfamiliar to us. So that sense of safety in the trauma is something that we notice. And the very last uh, misconception that families have, including my own and including myself, was this idea that we're too broken to change. That there, instead of, in my mind, we are not broken, we are becoming the greatest expression of love we have ever known. So when a family or individual within a family says, I am too broken, our family is too toxic, our family is too crazy, our family is too fill in the blank. Well, then what they're really saying is, we're too broken to change, we might as well just stay where we are. And so this disempowering heavy energy causes the reoccurrence of this generational pattern that we've noticed forever. The great news is, is once a family understands they are misconceiving, they're misunderstanding who their family actually is, then they can make a choice to look into these more empowered narratives about their family who is actually brilliant, brave, and genius. And so we're just trying to uncover their natural state of being uh, for themselves, but actually energetically healing the family from within. So all families, all people actually have what they need naturally to heal from within themselves. And that is the beauty of this message. Oh, that's deep and resonating. And I thank you for sharing this so much so much value in the content that you just shared and i hope that our listeners are really paying attention to the details that you have thus so far shared with us i want to dive into the publication and i want to ask our producer to put up that picture on the screen there you go and i want you to tell us what was the deep inspiration behind you writing that book and also tell us what is the major message that you want people to hear in terms of healing, upliftment, and just a, a good positive outlook on life? So Andy, if I'm hearing you, we're having just a little um, yeah. in and out. But from what I understand, you're asking me, the journey to bring the book into the world. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, that's correct. We have a bit of delay. Little bit of a delay. Okay, that's okay. So what was going on was at the end of... Wow. Come on, technology, behave yourself in the name of the Lord. There you go. Go ahead. Whoa. What's happening here, Dexter? <laughs> okay. Are we okay, resynchronized? Like okay, excellent. I, I just went on a pause to talk about the pause. So at the end of the pandemic, I came to a part of my own journey at age 57, where as an essential worker, I was being limited on how I would be able to see and spend time with the children and the teenagers. And when I realized that I was not going to be able to see them in the same way and that they would be in their environments that weren't necessarily very safe, my heart gave way. And in that heartbrokenness, I had to stop. I had to come to a stop because I had a breakdown emotionally, mentally, psychologically, mm. and spiritually to not be able to see the children particularly. And mm -hmm. so where I landed was I went through a breakdown to break through, to break free, 
during that particular process. Now, I share with everyone now that I'm a recovering caterpillar. I did not realize I was sacred, even up to the age 57. And through a spiritual awakening, I had a dream after acupuncture. It set me on this really interesting journey of know thyself. So who was Dr. Kelly without serving those that I had been serving my entire life, really since childhood, keeping people safe? That wow. Help us, Lord. <laughs> part of my own healing on, journey technology behave yourself. and through its pages i began to put together these patterns and so the biggest aha moment i had andy was i realized that i didn't have a family life mm. that my family was life itself yeah wow that is really intriguing, really intriguing. We seem to be having a bit of a challenge with the technology, but nevertheless, we will pursue, we will push on. And here we go again. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can't hear you now. And I did continue <laughs> to talk, so there's no telling yeah, what probably. that was. <laughs> Probably, probably it's just gonna show up when we, we look at the master tape, but we, we're just gonna continue. I, I want you to Great. go back to the, the process of the spiritual awakening and give us a little bit more detail on that and how it impacted your life. Yeah, Andy, so I'm uh, someone who chose to experience incredible amount of mental, emotional, and physical pain in this particular incarnation. So I believe I'm an expression of life, um, having a particular experience with my family. And as part of that process, I used significant amounts of coping mechanisms like dissociation, addiction to alcohol, drugs, workaholism, uh, my three favorite things were Patron, pastries, and purchases. And so using those coping mechanisms at the point where I began to have pain and I was filled with prescription medications, I had been in therapy for 30 years. Wow. And I hit that wall where I still hadn't been at the root cause of all of that. We are were beings of energy. So I hadn't dealt with my energy system. So I went to acupuncture, Andy, and they put over a hundred pins in my physical body to help stabilize the pain. And when they did that, as a nurse, I knew what was going on, but the meridians of my body in ancient Chinese medicine flooded with memories and toxins and all kinds of interesting things. And it took me six months of three times a week acupuncture as I was purifying and detoxifying my body to, to begin the process of clearing my energy field. Now yeah. that took quite a bit longer, but what I will tell you is that I'm pain-free, addiction-free, prescription free. Right. In other words, I was able to heal from within, yeah. recalibrating my energy body. And as I was doing that and was devoted to new ways of loving myself, having compassion for myself, forgiving, you know, all of the beautiful things that we're all meant to do, which is to go in into the inner journey, right? The hero's journey, which we're yeah. all on, is to just reawaken and rediscover. So the awakening occurred as a result of my willingness to step outside the box and go through. I had been through the mind with my trauma therapist um, preparation. I'd been through the body with my nursing, but I had no idea that there was door number three with the energy. And so once I was guided into that was when I was finally able to align, balance and connect my mind, body and spirit into its natural state. Yeah, wow, okay, wonderful. Uh, I, I wanna look at something that I think is very important and I guess our audience would be really concerned about this. What are some of the challenges that you think 
families are faced with from your personal experience with regards to how they deal with and manage the trauma? And are we looking to manage or are we looking to eliminate trauma altogether? Our natural state is trauma free. So mm -hmm. what the earth and humanity are moving through is traumatization that has been in our in our bandwidth for a very long time, we're magnetizing harmonization. So what does this mean for families though? One of the very first things families can choose to do is to slow down the moments or the momentum of their current life in the fast lane. One of the things I notice is that families are overwhelmed they're overburdened, they're overscheduled, their anxiety is through the roof. The family's nervous system, you can see, you know, dad's anxious, mom's anxious. And I've raised two children into their 30s. I have two beautiful new guides on the planet, my granddaughters who are six and four. And I did my best to hide my anxiety, my depression, my complex PTSD, if we want to label it that. It was just a I just wasn't in the right energy state, but I really tried to hide that from my children as they were growing up. And what I realize now is that energy flows, man. And so I wasn't hiding anything from anyone. All I was doing was rippling my unhealed energy into the next generation, which were my children. And so the beautiful thing about this is once families choose to consider the possibility this moment that actually creates our reality. Mm -hmm. So if families choose to slow down the momentum of their lives and begin to, to just schedule some stillness in there, I call this look to the stars, the stars being stillness, thankfulness, affirmations, reflection, and showing up for themselves, their family, humanity, and the natural world well, what we now is we've slowed the momentum of the old heavy energy and we've hit a kind of a neutral point, which takes courage, by the way. And now the family sets in motion, kind of turns itself in the direction of the higher vibrations, which takes time to practice and to notice a difference in the nervous system of the individuals, including our little children and our teens and our families. They're just they're just so overwhelmed. And the world, that shark tank I talk about of energy, the systems around us do their best because it's old energy to keep us distracted, to keep us in kind of a dissonance or a thinking pattern that places fear, which is familiar energy aligned with resistance. So if we're busy taking care of everyone else and worrying about if we have a home and working our nine to five and doing all that kind of stuff, if we're busy in the outside world, doesn't give us a lot of time for the inner journey. So the great news is though, is that in this moment, families, no matter what age, can determine whether they'd like to shift, which is the sacred healing of individual and their intention, their attention into a new way, a more empowered way of co-creating their reality in their lives. And it can happen right now. I love your optimism and I, I love the desire and the passion that you show for the subject. I would love to remind our audience that this is so deep, so resonating that you need to at least say something, ask a question. It can get deeper, it could go further. What I'm concerned about is you spoke about trying to hide the things that you were negatively impacted by from your family and you thought you were hiding it, but yes. it wasn't. How can the family be impacted by one individual who is trying to hide something like you did, but obviously can't because it has an energy of its own? And what should they do in response to dealing with a situation like that? Yeah, Andy, that is such an intuitively beautiful question and I'm so thankful you asked it. So this is where this idea, so as science is marrying this idea of spirituality, 
quantum physics really helps us with this because this is also something that I understood inside of myself. So imagine this, it's this idea of the pebble in the pond. And so we are all interconnected in the world. And so if I am just vibing this joy at you, which I am right now, then that energy is vibrating through this broadcast. It's vibrating everywhere. Anyone within my vicinity is feeling the vibration of this energy. And so if I'm vibrating, then unknowingly, remember, many of us are caterpillars. We're really sleepy. We don't realize we're vibrating, whatever it is. So we've heard this somebody's in a mood or somebody has a low vibe or high vibe or the vibe thing, whatever the vibe is, right? We can feel it in our environment. We know when something's going on in our house that doesn't feel great. And most of the time we want to run from the hills at it. Just, I'm out. I'm not in the room, right? And so one of the things that really helped me um, understand this for myself was I am vibing. I own my thoughts, words, beliefs, emotions, feelings, and actions. And so anything that I'm seeing in my environment is a reflection of my vibration, which means I had to do two things. I had to own my own shift and I had to own my own BS, which is belief system. So it all came back to what am I bringing into the vibration of my relationship to myself first, got to put my own oxygen mask on, right? Got to figure that out first. And as I began to do that, my husband and I, um, who had planned this this lifetime together again, we'd been we've been together many times and had not been able to break through these old couple dynamics. But what we were able to do this time was recognize the sacred in each other, hold the space and turn back into the direction of our traumatized families intentionally without saying a word. We would go to holiday parties or we would meet them somewhere and we would just rest in the healing that had already happened. Our vibrations were higher and without saying one word, our families over the last three and a half years have healed trauma from the, vibra the shift in vibration alone from me individually, my husband individually, from the two of us collectively. So with intention and attention and inspired action, we turned back into the heavy energy to sit and rest in it, knowing that all of our family are sacred on their own journey. We're not here to fix, change, or save anyone. Woo! Now we're really free because we just get to create joy in our own lives. And, it, and that ripples into the fabric of all of our relationships like magic. It's the weirdest thing I have ever experienced as a scientist. I could not explain it until I read more about quantum physics and this idea of entanglement and resonance. And so that is how the vibration heals. It's the magic within our own vibration, but I had to own my own shift and my own BS and my own journey, which I did. I finally turned into the direction of owning it. Wow, I'm speechless for a moment. I wanna take this moment to really thank you for how vulnerable you have been with regards to your own personal story and how in-depth you're willing to go to share the information with us. And I want to take a little break and have the thought of the week be put up on the screen so that we can share it with our people. Every episode we have a particular thought for the week and I'm going to read this thought. It says, the mystery of life lies in the ability of a seed to die and live again. Imagine what God did for us through his son's death, burial, and resurrection. Let me repeat that. The mystery of life lies in the ability of a seed to die and live again. Imagine what God did for us through his son's death, burial, and resurrection. 
And I know that resonates with a whole lot of people that are listening now and would hear it in the future. So Dr. Kelly, what is the response of the book, the publication that you have seen so far? What are you hearing from people? What are they saying? What are the tidbits, the messages, the volume of value that they are actually getting? What's the feedback you have receiving from folks? The feedback, which has been so powerful for me personally, I was uh, very, very afraid actually to put this into the world. I, you know, it's a little bit easier to stay hidden, uh, actually, and and, um, and yet that wasn't what I came to do. I came to, I have a sacred promise to myself to share a message of empowerment, hope, healing, and transformation for families. And what I am hearing personally with those who have read the book, who have uh, approached me personally, but also uh, through reviews and other things is that they've been surprised with this knowing. In other words, it felt as if, although I wrote about it, it's as, it's as if they already knew that they were sacred, but yeah. just needed to remember and awaken to it and to have a, right. a format to, to do something, you know, how to turn in that direction. So the how to turn in the direction of that when, from what I can tell, I have never seen a book like this come into the world that talks specifically about families in an empowered state rather than a disempowered state. And so the, what I'm what what is coming to me is a reflection of the inner knowing of the individual reading the book that they are sacred and they just have read the book to remember. And I've read when I was going through my process of awakening, I read hundreds of books. I couldn't get enough reading about philosophers and ancient wisdom traditions and so on and so forth. I, books were very and are remain powerful for me. So this book, I believe, is a gentle reminder to those with eyes to see and ears to hear that they are sacred, worthy of unconditional love, devotion and reverence, which means so is their family. I love it. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to read something and I'm sure you'll be very familiar with it. And I want to get your comments. It goes like this. The sacred family shares their love with each other as they grow, allowing all to awaken as the light of love does flow. The journey is unique to all, the pain and suffering clear, and yet, the sacred family chose to heal despite their deepest fears. Who is this sacred family who shares their light each day, allowing us to heal the pain and suffering along the way? Tell us a bit about that. Well, as part of my own healing journey, it was important that I heal the relationship between my mother and I and my father and I it was, it was one of the most important steps that I took in knowing thyself. And one day, this is, this is one, another poem literally just kind of came in a week ago. But what's powerful about this poem is that it's the first one that I, in quiet stillness, allowed a new voice, a new empowered voice to come through me that I hadn't even heard or knew was there in my own being. And so this poem was a representation of a higher level of expanded awareness around families themselves. And it's vital that our families begin the process of noticing their hidden power, which is their resilience, wisdom, and genius. And this poem allows someone to read it and go, I would not look at my family in this way. This, this poem isn't resonating with me and, and or this poem really resonates with me. It really is just a matter of where you are in the journey of your own healing. And if you are able to see your family 
through their own journey, my parents went through their own traumas, their parents, their parents. I went back 14 generations trying to determine what were the themes, what was the trauma, what is it we were all here trying to heal, which is honoring the energy aligned with love. So I was very passionate about when I see my family from this higher state or expanded state of sacred, which is the Christ consciousness. Now I want to be able to create a roadmap for other families who read it to understand that perspective and not just understand it intellectually, but hold it in their heart as a feeling as it guides them into creating it in their own lives. Deep personal spiritual experience now that one not only heard about, but actually feels because now it is personal and belongs to them. I love it. Dr. Kelly, if you had the opportunity, and, and this comes from a, a really deep coaching perspective, if you had the opportunity to speak to your younger self and with your knowledge and experience now, give you some advice, what are some of the things that you would say to a younger you if you had that opportunity? What I would say to her, and this would be in the deepest, darkest, parts of the trafficking experience. What I would say to her is that even within that experience, she was never alone, will never be alone, was never meant to feel alone. She was held in every moment of that experience by love, pure love. If there would be anything I would want to impart, and I've done much imagining and visioning around the healing of uh, the inner child myself, and I imagine holding parts of the child that had different experiences, but I literally hold that part in my arms as, as the mother, right? And, and I hold her near my heart so she can hear my heartbeat. So not that I'm explaining something to her, to hear her say, or her, to hear me say to her, you're never alone. That's not gonna, that's not going to mean much to her because she was told a lot of things that weren't true, right? So I knew I had to actually connect my love, my the pure love, the sacred light that I am to her light, even if she couldn't feel it, I had to open that inner light just a little bit, get the candle to burn just a little bit so she could feel who she truly is. And that is how I have done a lot of the healing of the inner, the inner world, my inner landscape that was fragmented into so many pieces in this particular journey but thankfully, gratefully, appreciatively, because of the guidance and the love that I have around me in the physical and non-physical, I am whole. My well-being and my natural state of joy has been transformed. So fear into freedom is a real journey. And to have remembered and be here right now having this conversation to you with you and your listeners and these families, it is a miracle. It is a miracle with what's going on in the world right now. And we need so much more of what you are speaking about because families are being attacked every single day from so many different forms of life. And we have to look at it from the aspect of thinking, what can we do to help each other, to support each other, to make this journey that we are all embarking upon so much more easier because the burdens seem to be so much heavier as time goes by. It's getting more and more difficult, more challenging. And I say that to ask you this, we look at the social media platforms that exist and we have so many things coming out 
with regards to families that may not be on a solid foundation. People are experimenting and doing all kinds of things that are not right emotionally, morally, ethically, spiritually, you name it. How can families protect themselves, Dr. Kelly, from that outer trauma that exists so that they can make the right steps to support and develop that growth and that sacred love that you speak about with and for each other because we are being bombarded daily on the social media platforms. How can we protect families, protect ourselves from these attacks? Thank you for that question. Yeah. In order to remember and awaken to our true nature, the very first thing that is important to consider is stillness. Is, is a place where you can be still in the silence. And so the very first thing I did was I looked around in my environment at that time and I looked to see what I was eating, drinking, listening to, reading, everything that had anything that was coming into my environment. And I ask myself one question, just one, does this feel heavy or does this feel light? Is this feeling more, is this bringing up fear and worry and anxiety or is this filling me with light, filling me with joy, filling me with creativity? Now, when I asked that one question, as something was coming in, I'd say to be honest. So now you gotta be honest with yourself what? No, that feels heavy. That is leaving my environment. It, it's gone. So I don't listen to the news. I don't listen and engage in social media. When I do, it is, remember, we're energy. So if I'm engaging in light, empowering media, and I'm sharing love, like, this kind of thing. So that's input and output. So there are two sides to the spectrum. This can be heavy energy in the social media or it can be incredibly beautiful, lighter energy. The very first thing that you just have to be honest with yourself first is what is it that I need to move outside? What routine do I need to change to be more quiet, more still so that I can actually feel my body so that I'm not ripping and running? Where is the flow of life? coming from, right? That was the first relationship. I had disconnected from life itself. So how do I feel? Now, I got to go back to my nervous system, man. So I took out all of the electronic technology and got into nature, took walks, laid on the ground, grounded, did all of those things. So for families that are raising children or have raised children, or let's say you've got great grandchildren around, whatever it is, what you'll notice, even in the pictures and videos today, you've got babies holding technology. You've got six television sets in a house. You've got radio that is blaring nothing but death, destruction, mayhem, fear, until you remove that input from your experience to slow the momentum, to get yourself into a space of sitting with yourself quietly. This takes a minute. If you've been in the fast lane forever, it took me a minute. If I'm sitting still, lots of chatter, lots of chatter about how I should be up and doing something. That's the old energy and the old thoughts. And that's okay, just watch and float by. But in answer to your question, the very first step is to notice and be curious about what is coming into my energy field that I own? So many families out of habit have bought into this technology and having things on all the time and all this kind of stuff. And that's, that's okay. That's where they are in the journey. But for those who are ready to move in a more empowered state, then only empowering messages only empowering energy should be entering into your system, your parental systems. If you've got children moving back and forth in homes, that's all right. Into the environment. It all starts with you. 
So that's what I would say. We have to remove the noise, whatever the noise and distraction is. However, it's one of the greatest coping mechanisms that humanity uses not to go inside to remember. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing. Folks, you have been listening to Dr. Kelly Bonhoff as we speak about an episode entitled The Five Misconceptions of Traumatized Families. And we have been looking at the deep resonating aspects of what she personally experienced, the trauma and so many other things, but also the overcoming and the healing and the, the regaining on the rejoining of that family love and that family situation something that is so precious that God has given unto us. And we have to take every opportunity available that we can not only protect, but uplift and support each other to ensure that the trauma that's happening in the world does not negatively impact upon our family and our family life, because that is sacred and that is very important in the sight of God. He has given us this family for a particular reason. In terms of the future, Dr. Kelly, what do you envisage for yourself and the contribution that you can continue to make to the well-being of families and people everywhere in terms of any plans that you may have for the future, things that you'd like to see happen, things that you want to do? What is your vision like for the future going forward? So, so Andy, our technology um, <laughs> went in and out again. Is there yeah. a need wow. to address? <laughs> we're, we're playing in the field of energy. And so we're coming in and out. I think our beautiful co-creation is just busting through the internet right now, causing all kinds of uh, beautiful things to happen. So it's all good. Right. What, it is. what are we talking about next? I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> what are we talking about next? I'm thinking about the future and okay. your vision, your vision for the future, what you envisage, what you see happening and the role you'd like to play going forward in that future. So I appreciate you, you asking that question. So let me kind of, if we're wrapping up, I'd like to answer that with this very short poem, if I may. When I look at your family, what do I see? When I look at your family, what do I see? The brightest of stars shining back at me. Their beauty, their brilliance, their bravery so clear. I marvel at the journey that brought them all here. The love that they hold a beacon so bright our hearts intertwined, bathed in pure light. Yet shadows of fear sometimes darken their eyes, a hint of the sorrows they have tried to disguise. In their confusion, a mystery unfolds, a puzzle of secrets of tales still untold. But still your family, steadfast and true, radiates a love that shines right through. When I look at your family, what do I see? The essence of hope gazing at me. In moments of silence, the truth is revealed. The timeless love and deep wisdom their hearts have concealed. Their love transcends beyond earthly confines, a cosmic embrace where pure light shines. Embracing their journey, their pain and their tears transforming their trauma, overcoming their fears. A testament of spirit of love's gentle power, finding freedom and healing in each sacred hour. Your family story, a beacon of grace, navigating through shadows, finding their pace. When I look at your family, what do I see? You are one sacred family and you're already free. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is what I see. The vision of our families are healed already. Yeah. Yeah. We're dancing into the vibration of a healed world. 
And no matter what anyone else says, when we envision a world where everyone is healed, yeah. we will wake up and it will be so. Okay. That is what I see. Okay. Wow. That's a very powerful vision and a very encouraging vision because we have so much negativity floating around in the world today. And sometimes it's hard to see a positive picture. But if we encourage ourselves, and as you just hinted a while ago, if we just close off all the negative energies and negative vibrations, shut off the news, shut off the media, everything that just is pointing at us in a, in a negative direction and not giving us anything hopeful to hold on to, we know that we can turn to so many different positive things and positive people and positive vibrations in our lives, mentally, socially, spiritually, most important, because it's the foundation of our existence. And so I think about the people that have lived a life that has not been secure, foundational for such a long time. Uh, you look at the Far East or the Middle East or probably Ukraine and it, it kind of boggles me when you sit and think about people walking around with their possessions with knapsacks on their backs. Children not being able to go to school and have a fair opportunity at the things that we consider as daily amenities of life. And I'm thinking, how do they survive, Dr. Kelly? How do they make it through a day that has so much uncertainty. There's nothing bright about tomorrow. There's war and bombardment and they have to lay in, in fear and stand in lines for food. And it gives me also the impression that so many times we take all these things for granted and we don't understand how precious and divine life itself is that we have been given by the creator. And we should be grateful and thankful for all the things that we have that so many don't and can't. How do then someone who's involved in a situation like that develop a heart of gratitude just for the fact that, hey, I'm alive. And once I'm alive, there is hope. So Andy, I'm going to put something out there in the world that's gonna expand an idea. And for those who are listening, please take what resonates and leave what doesn't, because everyone is on their own journey of understanding. When I look at humanity, what do I see? I see Christ consciousness, sovereignty in motion with every child, with every um, with every person. So if we hold people in a state, in the energy of villain, for instance, the person that we choose to label as villain is a sacred sovereign being exploring the energy of, we'll call it villainy. And as we hold that contrast, then for those who are sacred sovereign beings, how is it that they hold on every day in those circumstances? I will tell you that there are war energy within our families, within ourselves. How does any of us hold on? And I'll tell you what it is. It's the sacred spirit. It is the Christ consciousness within us all that stays in motion. We are pure love in action and we are here to experience and discover that even through whatever we have chosen to experience, even in the darkest corners of this earth, no matter what role anyone is playing, we are all headed to the same place, which is home to who we are, which is sacred. And I believe when we can stand in love forgiveness and compassion for every soul on this earth is when we will shift into the oneness, the harmony and the unity 
we are making our way into that expanded idea that we're all souls having an experience and even the little ones who have chosen an incredibly heavy experience. I speak from personal experience on this. I had no idea what kept me alive, Andy, until now. And I will tell you, it is my sacred nature and the non-physical love light that surrounded me and the physical guardians and angels that surrounded me as I moved through the hero's journey. So when I look, when, when I hear about it, because I don't look at those images, it's not easy for me to hear about that and all that. But I will tell you this, I hold because of the trafficking experience in this and other lifetimes, I hold the healing key to heal the trafficking of children, teens, adults within me. I hold it energetically. I chose to come with the possibility of remembering and helping humanity heal that wound and many more. Our families are discovering their sacredness and the hidden keys that will heal themselves and humanity. That's why we're all here. I want to remind our viewers that we are looking at the five misconceptions of traumatized families with Dr. Kelly Bonhoff. And again, I really want to thank her for being very vulnerable and open and being able to share her personal experience in such a beautiful and compassionate manner. It tells us a lot about how much you have received the ability to be grateful, full of gratitude, that spiritual awakening you spoke about. And now you see yourself as a beacon of hope for so many people who have been touched by that negative aspect of life. And that's a calling that you have placed upon yourself because you saw what damage it can do. And you saw the thing happening in your own family. And you had to do so much. You had to pull yourself together. You had to drag yourself through the mud. But whatever it took, you also saw the other side. And so mm -hmm. finally, the question that I want to ask before we wrap up is, how important it is for people in the midst of their sorrow, in the midst of their challenge, in the midst of their disappointments or disillusionment to see that the sacred love that was given to us from the very beginning, it is always there. It's always constant. It doesn't go away. And now we have to make the right choice by grasping onto it and holding onto it for dear life. What I would say is make a natural choice towards love. It's a natural part of our beingness. But here's what I want to say about disappointment frustration, shame, anger, judgment. Woo, that one's a big one. Those are sacred energies as well. And it's important that we remember that because every energy is sacred, the reason why we've held on to trauma as long as we have is because it's been scary to feel our feelings. And we have been told that those feelings are not to be shared or not are, are negative and all of that kind of stuff. That is untrue. Every energy is sacred and we are here to move that energy through this beautiful technology of our vehicle, our body, transmute it, send it into the field of energy with love and then keep it moving. So what I would say is, if you're experiencing any of the heavy energies, all they're saying, here's what they're doing, they're going, I'm ready to heal. Please just move the energy through your body, allow more love light to come in to move the energies. And what you will notice very quickly, as long as you're not attached to a story, is that those energies will move through you in about 45 to 60 seconds. So all that fear around feeling your feelings and feeling like you're gonna come unglued, I want you to know that if you just allow 
ask for help, believe it's there, receive the help, and just allow all to be as it is, divine timing. You are exactly where you're meant to be, and so is your family. You're beautiful, brilliant, and brave. See yourselves as you truly are, and you will feel the shift. Thank you so very much, Dr. Kelly Bonhoff. You have been a tremendous source of inspiration, transformation, and comfort to many, I am sure. I've learned so much, and I'm really glad that we had this time to spend together. As we wrap up, I was going to look at our guest that is coming on for the next episode, but I did not find the information I was looking for. But we'll have that in a subsequent announcement out on the social media platforms. I really want to say a, a thank you to the audience and to those who have been in the background listening and viewing this program. We apologize for the technology, but it's all part of the process. And I am sure that you would have felt the positive love and the energy that we have experienced thus far with our guests. It's exactly 800 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, and we have to wrap up now. So what I'd like to remind the audience, our friends, our well-wishers, our family, our loved ones to think about is that as long as we have the opportunity before us, to make a choice, let's choose the positive one. And in all that we're doing, remember that we have every single right, the opportunity, the authority, and the ability to continue to break out of depression. Until the next episode, this is Andy Charles, your brother and your friend in Christ saying so long, Godspeed, God bless. Bye for now. Take care. There ain't got no way, ain't got no way I'm gonna make it with I'm alone, no Ain't got no way I'm gonna make it with I'm alone, no Ain't got no way I'm gonna make it with I'm alone, no Ain't got no way I'm gonna make it with I'm alone, no Trouble in my way, but daily hear me say Ain't got no way, ain't got no way, ain't got no way, ain't got no way.